All right. Welcome, everybody, uh, again to our Laser 2000 webcast series. Uh, today, uh, we are presenting one of our most recent new partners, uh, K-Labs. We will talk about the topic multiplane light conversion um, and the beam shaping uh, that can be achieved with uh, this technique, and especially about the uh, material processing um, applications that can be achieved. Um, for the agenda, first of all, I will give uh, some brief general information about our broad spectrum uh, in the photonics field and how Calebs fits in our portfolio. Afterwards, I will uh, be happy to introduce Gwen Pallier uh, from Calebs. She will give you an interesting insight into uh, their Canunda range. Uh, at the end, we will have a Q&A session with all the questions you have. Please uh, use the chat function uh, while the webcast is going on. We will make sure to answer all of them at the end of the webcast. Uh, Laser 2000 has more than uh, 30 years of experience uh, in all facets of photonics. Uh, we work with manufacturers from all over the world to provide uh, local customers with their products. For this purpose, uh, we not only have contacts in Germany, but also in France, uh, the uh, Iberia and Scandinavia. We also have partners in the UK and Benelux. With our know-how, we um, create the basis for comprehensive and individual solutions for our customers. Um, our wide range of products allows us to provide our customers every kind of photonics products. We're um, from the laser safety uh, equipment range, um, where we have, uh, for example, uh, goggles or curtains. Um, with a lot of test equipment, uh, optics and optomechanics, um, uh, up to the fiber optics departments um, where we have, uh, yeah, for, for telecom-based uh, products. So today we are talking about uh, lasers and light sources overall, uh, where we have a broad spectrum starting from UV to CO2 lasers, um, and also the beam delivery systems. And uh, therefore, laser material, especially in the laser material processing part, um, Calebs comes uh, comes into mind um, uh, with their Canunda range. Uh, we wanna we wanna introduce you to, or Gwen will introduce you to uh, the Canunda range with uh, four of their products actually. Whereas I would like her to overtake. Thank you for this, uh, for being here. Gwen. Hi, hello everybody. So let me share my camera. So it should be working. Hello everybody, good afternoon. I'm really glad to be here today. Thank you very much, Marco, for the kind uh, introduction. I'm really happy to be here today with Leather 2000, who is uh, distributing us in all the German country uh, speaking. And uh, my name is uh, Gwen Pallier. I am uh, from K-Labs. So let me see if I can change the slide. It should work now. So we are here today, as Marco was saying, to talk about MPLC, which is our core technology at K-Labs. Uh, we will talk about how it uh, can be applied to laser material processing and how beam shaping can improve all the processes, uh, both for with USB lasers and with high power lasers. So I'm product line manager at Kylabs, so I'm in charge of all the product development related to laser material applications. And I will try to describe uh, some of the work that we have done on that. So today, what I will discuss, I will start with uh, a few words about MPLC, how it works and who we are at K-Labs. Then I will go through uh, a few applications results that we have, different partnerships that we have had over the last years uh, and uh, uh, targeting different applications such as surface uh, texturing, thin film removal, glass cutting or laser welding. And each case, uh, we have a different partner. We have also a different shaping systems. And in all cases, I will show you what we did bring to those processes. I will uh, finish my presentation by um, focusing on the key features of uh, our different products and conclude on the different application. So beam shaping uh, with uh, MPLC. 
A few words first about the company, Kylabs. Kylabs, we are a deep tech company. It means that we have uh, developed product based on a very innovative technology, which is called multiplane light conversion. So how will I, I will explain uh, how it works in the next few slides. But Kylabs, we are based in west of France. Now the company is uh, seven years old and we are working worldwide. We are exporting a lot and we have different sales partners among which uh, uh, Laser 2000 is our uh, one of our good distributors. Uh, because of the innovation that we have brought and the new way that uh, we um, managed to think the light propagation and the beam shaping, uh, we have managed also to raise actually uh, quite a, a lot of money, 17 millions over the last years, which among, uh, among others uh, helped us to uh, hire a lot of talented people. Now there are nearly 60 people in Kylab, so in uh, west of France. This technology, MPLC, how does it work? Uh, the idea, is, as I was saying, is to really think differently compared to other beam shaping technologies. So what we do is that we have a lot of different uh, special face plate and the light will go through all of them, one after the other, and in between you have to have some propagation. Doing that somehow also, when we do the develop our system, we sync modes. So we don't sync diffraction as some systems are doing, and we don't sync also ray tracing propagation. We think mode by mode. The easiest way to implement it at the beginning was doing it in a transmissive way. That's what you can see on the bottom left picture. So you were having all the different face plate, and at the end you have the nice shape. On the way, we realized that it was much more practical to implement it in a reflective way. So now we have a reflective implementation as described in the bottom right pictures. Light is going back and forward in between two mirrors. One of them is textured and is uh, giving the shaping of the, of the light. The other one is just a simple mirror. The image you have on the bottom right is uh, um, a setup for a telecommunication application, as well as the image in the middle, which is also an MPLC for some telecommunication application. This way, because you have as many face plates as you want, uh, you have a lot of possibilities. You can do any kind of shape, even very complex shape, we can do it with MPLC. The system is fully passive, which is very good. You have no uh, internal losses compared to, for example, diffraction technologies, and you have no moving parts, which is also very good to be uh, stable. Uh, because it's reflective also, we can handle really high power and really high energy, but we will get back to that uh, along the presentation. And uh, you can handle multiple beam as the input and at the output of the MPLC, as you can see also on the different images. So to what does this technology apply? So let me change my slide. Maybe I have to re-click. Okay, so MPLC applies actually to a lot of different applications. We have done a lot of telecommunication uh, over the years. Aruna is our product line for local network uh, improvement. Proteus is also for telecommunication, but more for telecommunication of the future and is dedicated more to laboratories today. And TILBA is our product line dedicated to laser communication, meaning communication between ground and satellites or satellite to satellite. We have also a custom product line addressing uh, some medical application or defense application but today we are here to talk about laser material processing and how MPLC can improve all the processes which are based on lasers. So this is a picture I love actually because it's our kind of family picture of the Canunda families and all, all the off-the-shelf product. Uh, you can see also on the bottom the three different black boxes is a Canunda pulse model, a Canunda split, ex, uh, a Canunda split module and a Canunda axigan module. All this is uh, the product which are dedicated to USB applications. The small gold optics on the bottom is also a Canunda axigan but not integrated as a module and it's also uh, working for uh, with USB lasers. The big one on the bottom um, is uh, Canunda HP. It's our product dedicated to high power applications, especially uh, for laser beam welding. It's uh, a cool down system, whole integrated, and it's uh, used uh, with high power lasers. So that's all our products. And somehow we will discuss each of them today during the presentation. But what do we want to do with the systems? We try to address, uh, first of all, the USB applications. So as uh, probably most of you know, there are many uh, USB applications. Among them, there is engraving, cutting, drilling, welding, uh, surface texturing also, which is very popular. We try to have work on each of them and have use cases and applications results for each of them. All those different applications are actually um, dedicated to different industry. Uh, we try also to work on each of them from medical to jewelry. And uh, of course, uh, among which you have electronic, which is also a big users of uh, USB laser uh, lasers. Uh, 
And what do we do for those applications? Well, uh, USB lasers are working very well. They are really great. They can do very nice process uh, thanks to the length of the pulse, which is extremely short. You have atomic process, so you have a very nice quality when you are doing your process. But the thing is that there is one huge challenge to tackle for USB processes, the yield improvement. So how to improve the yield of those processes? Well, you could think further that you just have to increase the energy of the laser, and that has been done a lot over the last years. Now, laser manufacturers are providing very beautiful lasers with higher energy and higher power. But the thing is that it's not that simple. If you put more energy on your material, you will have thermal effect, you will have heat affected zone, and at the end, you will lose your quality. Then you could say, okay, I just have to increase the scanning speed. One more time, it's not that simple. But basically, there are two uh, types of scanners. Galvo scanners and polygon scanners. And somehow we are reaching some limit in terms of scanning speed. Then uh, you can say, okay, uh, I can do parallel processing with beam splitting. This is very well known as well. Everybody somehow knows that we have to go to that solution. But the thing is that today on the market, it's not that simple to split beams. And there are no very uh, fine solution for beam splitting, which are compatible with the USP laser constraints. Somehow at Kylabs, we have realized that if you really want to increase the yield, somehow you have to find a trade-off between four main functions. You have to stabilize your beam. If you don't stabilize the beam, you are not able to do a proper shaping and a proper uh, splitting. After that, you have to shape your beam. If you want to have a high quality process and you want to really uh, lose as less energy as possible, you have to have the optimal shape on your material. Then you have to split the beams. You have to do parallel processing. And this is the best way to actually use optimally the energy which is available from the lasers. At last, if you want to really be a, compatible with the next generation of lasers, which will provide uh, even more power than uh, cur current lasers, you will have to manage the cooling down. You will have to manage the high power and the high energy. At K-Labs, somehow, we have proven that each of these different uh, function, we are able to do it in a very nice way. And we know that we can combine them to have the beam shaper uh, that will really change the world of USB laser processes. So I will discuss each of these different uh, function in the presentation and the application result that we have with them. So pictures uh, you have here, you have um, some top hat, uh, square and round. These are our standard product. And you have some splitting pattern, uh, 2D or 1D. This is also our standard uh, product. If you want to have information on that, please uh, do contact uh, Laser2000. High power applications. Uh, one more time, there are a lot of different applications with uh, CW, multi kilowatt, high power lasers. We try to have use cases and application results in each of these applications. Laser cutting, laser welding, additive manufacturing, and composite heating, we have already some results that we can present. These different applications are actually addressing also different markets from automotive to aerospace or naval for the most popular ones. We also want to uh, have systems, uh, beam shaping systems systems which are compatible with the industrial constraint of those uh, markets. But what will we do uh, with high power laser? Well, with high power laser, somehow uh, it's a pretty, pretty different need in terms of beam shaping. The thing is that each application will request a very different uh, shape. So what we have realized is that we will have to have many uh, different standard product addressing each of these application. So here is some example of the beam shape that we could do at Kylabs. Uh, you can have a line and a dot, uh, a dot and a C, or a ring and a dot. Uh, all this is possible, and uh, we want to uh, provide the shape that will uh, bring the process improvement uh, data that you can see on the bottom of the slide. So the idea is to have a better quality and also uh, cost reduction uh, in the different processes that we want to address. But how, uh, how have we done that or how do we want to do that? Now we will go to probably uh, the most interesting part of the presentation, all the different applications results that we have. So let me please start uh, with surface texturing. So surface texturing, uh, we have had some results with Alphanov, and I want to really thank them for the collaboration we had last year. It was really nice. They, ha they are really expert in surface texturing, and uh, it was a very nice development that we have done, and we actually target to do a lot more with them uh, this year in the next few months. 
So what application have we targeted? Uh, Alphanov is actually an expert in surface functionalization. It means that they want to apply a texture to a surface, metallic or non-metallic, which will be a nano or micro scale, which will be a periodic uh, texture, a periodic uh, structuring of the surface that will give it some function. It can be air water flow control. For example, uh, it's well-known application that you can improve um, the um, aerodynamic uh, performance of airplanes, for example, using surface texturing. It can be light properties, for example, light diffraction. Uh, as you can see also in the middle, uh, in the image in the middle, it's more for having something which is um, for cosmetic aspect. It's uh, beautiful to see that, and it's also with absolutely no painting. It's just done by texturing the surface. It can be tribological properties. It's more for automotive application, for example, or also a pretty um, interesting application is bacterial growth. By applying different texture on a, a single surface, you could choose that bacteria are going one side or the other. So that's a panel of things that uh, Alphanov can do. But with them, we have focused on deep blackening. You can see on the bottom left of the, your screen, uh, the application that we have done with them, it's applying a very black, very dark texture to a surface, which is metallic. So the image you can see here, you have absolutely no painting. It's just a texture applied to the surface. How did we do that? Uh, it's important to see the setup that we were using. So we were having an injection tele telescope. It's a very simple tele telescope with just two lenses to adapt uh, the input beam to uh, the requested input beam uh, of our Canon Pulse module. So pretty simple to, um, to uh, uh, design and pretty simple to install. At the output of our, of our system, we were having a line top hat. So it was a line, uh, uh, it was a top hat over the lens and a Gaussian profile over the width. The line was uh, three millimeter lens. And after this um, uh, shape, which was just after the module, we were having a transport telescope made with uh, an L3 lens and an F theta lens. And we were having in the processing plane a line of 600 micrometer lens and only 30 uh, micron uh, width. We were working with a femtosecond laser from Amplitude, very beautiful laser, the Tangerine HP, and we were working with a hurricane scanner from ScanLab and an f lens from Kioptic. I want to spend some time on that slide because it's extremely important. Uh, with our technology, multiplane light conversion, we preserve the depth of focus. This is really unique. All the beam shaping technology, they have a very beautiful shape in one single plane. But as soon as you are just a little bit before or a little bit after, you will lose that shape and you will not be able to have uh, the effect you want uh, on your process. In our case, as you can see, we have a very nice depth of field. And when you are looking 500 micron before or after the best focus, still you have the very same line as in the focus. And this is in the focus plane for a very small um, pattern. As I was saying, it's only 600 micron lets and 30 micron widths. So what you can see here is that you have somehow the same depth of field as you would be having with a Gaussian mean. This is really unique. What does that mean for you? It means that if your uh, sample is not perfectly plain, uh, we will be uh, robust enough to handle uh, that non-planity of the um, system. If your F theta uh, lens um, uh, plane of uh, focusing is also not perfectly flat, which is always the case, we will be able to handle that in the edge of the field of view because we have a high depth of field. So this is really well important if you want to have a robust process uh, to have this big uh, depth of field uh, when you are doing the shaping. Now, uh, one slide about beam stabilization. As I was saying, this is also extremely important. What we have realized at Kylabs is that uh, when you're working with uh, any kind of beam shaping technology, if your input uh, changes, you will have a huge change in the shaping at the output. So somehow, uh, what is shaping the beam has to always take as an input a Gaussian beam. As I was also saying, at Kylabs, we are thinking modes. So when I see this beam, which is a little bit shifted from the center of the beam, I don't see a shifted beam. I see energy in the main uh, TEM00 mode, so the, the kind of standard Gaussian mode. And I see also some energy in higher order modes. So what we will do in this uh, MPLC, which is called the mode cleaner, we will have two different passes. The light which is in the in, in the normal Gaussian mode will go through one pass and then we'll go to uh, some shaping and will give you the nice shape that you want to have on your material. 
somehow the energy within which is in the higher orders will follow another path, will go through another way in the MPHC and will be blocked at the end. What does that mean? No matter what imperfection you have, tilt, shift, defocus, ellipticity, astigmatism, in all cases, your shape at the output of the module will not change. You will always have the nice square top hat or line top hat or round top hat that you were expecting, and you will have a very robust process. On the uh, other side, of course, there is no magic. The energy which is going in the higher order modes and which is blocked at the end uh, is lost, and you have some somehow a loss of energy. But as most of you probably know, uh, most of the time you have uh, too much energy with your lasers. So I guess this um, trade-off is very good. You have a very robust process, a very stable shape, but you lose some energy. So now the shaping. So we have stabilized the beam. Now we shape it, it uh, in, a, in a line uh, top hat. So I will be put short on that. Uh, you can see that um, after the module in the processing plane, you are having a very flat line with an homogeneity of plus or minus 10% only. The, what is important also to see is that it's extremely sharp at the edge and the transition length from 90% to 10% uh, of uh, the maximum energy is only 30 micron for a 600 micron lens uh, line. So it's extremely sharp um, transition lens. Now, what have we done uh, uh, in terms of process? Well, as I was saying, we were looking at deblackening. So the image you can see now is uh, the process optimization. So it was done by Alphanov, and we want to thank them for, for that. Uh, they were trying different fluents. They were also trying different um, overlap uh, on the different beams. And they were also uh, trying to have different, uh, you go, uh, different number of times over the same surface. As you can see, somehow, sometimes you have really a deep black and sometimes you have a, a, a less deeper black. What they have seen is that you can have different regimes, but you can always reach very deep blackening with our top at line. So this is one regime and this is the other regime. So what you can see also in this graph is that um, the idea was really to improve the yield. So we were not trying to get a deeper black uh, than with the standard Gaussian Bing, but we were trying to have it faster. So we were comparing uh, a reflectivity, a given reflectivity. Let's say you want to reach 5% reflectivity. Uh, how much time does it take? Well, the thing is that with this line, you were improving the time needed to uh, get the same reflectivity by a factor of 20, so a yield improvement of 20. Uh, this is already very good, and we were very happy uh, of this result. Uh, we could do even more than that. We just somehow didn't have the opportunity yet. But this is not a limitation. Uh, with that line, which is available off the shelf, uh, one of our standard products, you can already get uh, that uh, yield improvement. Now, uh, I will ta start to uh, talk about something else, another application, uh, beam splitting. So I was really happy also to work with uh, Lazea uh, last year. They were very nice partners. Uh, they provide uh, very nice um, machines, and we were happy to work with them. So I want to thank them for all the results that we were having. The idea was to target SIM film removal application and to also look at uh, yield improvement. So the application, well, the idea was to actually uh, ablate some material for a very small thickness, uh, which is uh, on a substrate of a different material in order to provide some function also to uh, this material. The end applications are solar, solar cells manufacturing, uh, OLED screen manufacturing, or microelectronics. Uh, what we wanted to do was actually improving the yield because the quality of this process is already very good, but the yield are not sufficient compared to somehow the price of the process or the price of the machine. So a big challenge always uh, this uh, yield improvement. So how were we doing that? The system somehow you can see is uh, pretty similar. You have to adapt the input diameter to the standard input of our module. We were doing that using an LS shape. It's a module from uh, Lazia, which is reducing or actually increasing the size of uh, a beam, a given beam. Uh, after the module, we were having some uh, splitted uh, beams, so, so a splitted pattern. We were having a transport telescope, and after the um, F-theta lens, we were having some splitted beams with a pitch of 160 micrometer uh, in between the different uh, spots. So the scanner was uh, an LS scan, so from uh, LASER. Uh, the F-theta lens was from Kioptic, and one more time, uh, we were using a femtosecond uh, laser from Amplitude, another very nice laser, the Tangor laser. 
Uh, I will be short this time on that because you already know that uh, depth of field is uh, very important and you know why. Uh, one more time, we were preserving the depth of uh, field uh, with uh, this system and you can see that you have very nice uh, spitted beams with no interference, uh, no chromatic effect over the relay range uh, of uh, the um, the, the real range of the beams, and uh, we were preserving the depth of uh, field compared to uh, the Gaussian beam or a simple standard Gaussian beam of the same uh, dimension. The shape quality, uh, what you can see here is uh, the quality of the shape before and the quality of the shape uh, after the, um, the last telescope, so at the output of the module and in the processing plane. Uh, in both cases, you have a very nice homogeneity of plus or minus 2%. And in the, in the um, processing plane, you have uh, a very small uh, spot of uh, 17 uh, micrometers uh, waste, so very small spots to do this uh, process that actually are requesting very small spots. What I want to insist on uh, on that slide is uh, that this very nice uh, pattern that you can see, which is very homogeneous with very small spot, you have it through the whole field of view of the FT talents. This is also something really unique because many shaping technologies, somehow they don't manage uh, to preserve the shape quality over the whole field of view. So we have checked with Ladea that we were having the nice uh, spitted beams over 40 millimeter by 40 millimeter in the processing plane through the FT talents. So very nice result and actually no chromatic effect, uh, no effect of this kind, uh, a depth of field which is preserved. So it's working well also in the whole field of view of the FT talents. Uh, the process results, well, we were looking at a decoding of a mob delay. We were trying to do a single pass decoding and the idea was to have um, a decoding of the same uh, um, depths. Uh, for the nine spitted beams. On the image you see here, well, you can see that the line are not perfectly parallel. This is actually due to um, in homogeneity, in homogeneity inside the material that we were processing. Uh, somehow, when they were doing this process uh, with a Gaussian beam of 30 micron um, diameter, they, they couldn't use the whole energy available uh, on the laser, as is the case for most of you, I guess, most of the time, uh, because they didn't want to have thermal effect. So because uh, they were only using less than 10% of the energy of the laser, we did really measure with the same laser an immediate yield increase of a factor of nine, thanks to the division in, of the energy into nine beams, no thermal effect and parallel processing uh, for decoding. Another application result now. Uh, this is very different. Uh, this was done with LZH, so uh, I also want to thank them. It was also a very nice collaboration with uh, our German uh, partners on glass cutting. They are very good uh, and, and uh, I, I guess uh, worldwide uh, uh, known for their expertise in glass cutting. And we were looking at um, how to improve glass cutting with special beams. So what is a bezel beam? Uh, bezel beams is another type of beam shaping. You are generating a bezel beams most of the time through a transparent axicon, as you can see on the image on the top right of your screen. Uh, your light goes through the axicon. It came out of the axicon with a conical phase. And when uh, the beam coming from the up and the top uh, the, the up and the bottom of the hexagon are meeting, they generate interferences, of course, or this is in three dimension, I just simplified the explanation, but they do interferences and they, they have a higher intensity uh, over uh, a Bessel beam, which is a um, very original beam. It has a very long uh, propagation lens, so we'll have, you will have a very intense beam over a huge uh, lens and a, a very small width. So the aspect ratio is actually really, really incredibly uh, better compared to Gaussian beam, for example. It's perfect for drilling and uh, dicing through mainly uh, actually uh, glasses, but there are also some other side applications of Bessel beams. The thing is that when you are using this transparent axicon, you have two main issues. The first one is the blend tip. When you, manu when you uh, manufacture your axicon, um, the tip uh, of the axicon is always somehow a little bit round. So the part of the beam which is going through this tip is coming out with a spherical phase, and it will also interfere with all the light which is uh, coming out with the conical phase. What will it give? It will give oscillation. That's what you can see on the image on the bottom right of your screen. You have oscillation over the intensity profile, which is not good for having a very uh, nice drilling through your glass, which is homogeneous through the whole glass. 
On the other side, because it's transparent, it means it's glass. It means it has an index. And when you are going through glass, as uh, probably all of you know, uh, you have a lot of things that you cannot uh, take care of. For example, the index will vary with temperature. So as soon as you heat up, uh, the index will vary and the Bessel beam will change. And also, as probably most of you know, um, the spectrum of uh, a USP laser uh, pulse is broad and you have also uh, some chromatic effect uh, over the pulse through the hexagon, you may not preserve, for example, uh, a 30, uh, 300 femtosecond um, pulse may not be 300 femtosecond uh, duration after uh, some lens or some transmissive hexagon. So what Kylabs do we do for that uh, issue? We are actually providing a reflective hexagon. So the idea that you have your light coming onto the hexagon and it's coming out of the hexagon with an angle. And after the hexagon, you have similarly a Bessel beam. So because it's reflective, we can have a really high uh, reflectivity. So a very nice somehow transmission of more than 99%. Uh, and uh, what is actually pretty funny about this hexagon is that you can play around a lot with them. So Depending on what Bessel beam dimension you are looking at, there are a lot of things that you can play with. You can play with the input beam diameter. You can play with the hexagon angle. You can play with the wavelength. And also, you can play with the setup, which is after the hexagon. So uh, a broad range of Bessel beam dimension is accessible. And if you want to play around with that, uh, we invite you to go on our website, uh, kylabs.com. We have some calculator, which is enabling you to uh, play around with different configuration. And you see what Bessel beam dimension you get with that. But now let's go to uh, what are the advantage of uh, this uh, reflective hexagon. Well, I guess the most important one is that we have the intensity curve closest to the theory available on the market. You can see on the top right, on the bottom right of the screen, uh, some result that we were having with FemtoST. So you have no more oscillation in, and you have a profile which is really, really, really close to theory. This is unique also in the world and you have the best uh, quality uh, Bessel beams uh, available because it's somehow manufactured in a very nice way and thanks to the reflective design. So no more oscillation mean a uh, um, uh, higher quality uh, process. And also the reflective design means that we can handle very high energy. Uh, we say one millijoule, somehow we have uh, even try more than that. It just depends on the, also somehow, as most of you know, the, um, the density of the energy. So if you have bigger beams on the hexagon, you can go uh, even to a higher energy than one millijoule. So what setup we were having? Uh, well, um, we were working with a USB laser, this time from Coherent, very nice laser as well. We were working with a, a hurricane scanner from ScanLab and uh, again with an FTETA from uh, Keyoptic. What we want to insist on uh, when you are seeing this uh, sketch is that we are actually going through a Galvo scanner. This was the main objective of uh, this experiment that we were doing uh, with LZH. It's not uh, standard, it's not easy. Bessel beams somehow, uh, most of the time, are very complex to go through a, a Galvo scanner for many reasons. Uh, one of them is the stability of the beam. The other one is just that the setup is complex because Axican uh, beams, after they have generated the Bessel beams, they kind of diverge a lot and they are making a ring further. So it's not easy at all, but uh, somehow LZH managed to do that and they managed to have the Bessel beam going through the Galvo scanner. So you also have uh, the, uh, beam, uh, the beam dimension uh, in uh, the bottom of the slide. So what result we were having? We were working on ultra thin glass from a shot and we were actually processing uh, uh, a huge field of view uh, with a, only once only one scan so it's a single shot drilling and the whole field of view through one scan uh, 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter so it's really paving the way for a new way to sync glass cutting with bezel beams because now with uh, that kind of uh, setup and that kind of hexagon you can go through a galvo scanner and you can expect to have drilling uh, of something which is really bigger than what you would get with a microscope objective for example i also want to uh, really say uh, uh, right now that uh, we know that the quality of the um, cut is not that good because when you really want to have a very nice quality cut, you would need to have a smaller Bessel beams. So the quality of the cut somehow is related to the dimension of the Bessel beam and it is coherent with the dimension that we were showing in the previous slide. But the objective was not the quality of the drilling in that case, it was really uh, to have uh, a huge field of view and to do um, scanning of the whole field of view with single pass drilling. 
So now, last but not least, um, probably uh, the most interesting for most of you, as far as I know, because uh, I guess that there are many uh, high power uh, laser users uh, today uh, attending the webinar, laser welding improvement. Uh, we did that uh, actually pretty uh, recently, so the results are six months old only. And I really want to thank the Institut Maupertuis for helping us in developing all that and uh, developing the process. We have collaborated with them. It was really nice. And we are actually still collaborating with them a lot. So they are also very nice uh, partners. So the idea was to improve laser welding with uh, a ring shape. So the challenge of the application, well, uh, actually laser beam welding is well known now for years. I guess it was one of the first application of CW lasers uh, when they appeared uh, a few decades ago. Uh, they, it is already providing very nice results. It is providing very repeatable process because you can automate them. You have really nice uh, welding quality. You can have already faster process compared to uh, other technology for welding. And you have actually a very um, high depth of penetration thanks to uh, the keyhole um, the keyhole mode uh, that you can have with laser beam welding. But still, there are many challenges that uh, has to be taken up uh, for laser beam welding. And at Skylabs, we, we are really looking at those challenges and we want uh, to find solution for them. Process robustness. Uh, the, the thing that we want to improve on that is uh, focus shift. Uh, when you have a standard laser head, that, uh, as probably most of you have uh, in your laboratories or in your companies, uh, they are working with uh, lenses. When you have a lens, well, the light has to go through the lens, so you cannot cool down in the middle of the lens, otherwise it's going to be uh, pretty complicated. So you have to cool down by the edge of the lens. So it means that uh, you will have a thermal gradient in between the center and the edge of the lenses. In addition of that, um, uh, uh, these thermal gradients, the whole lens will also heat up, so there will be a thermal gradient uh, from the center to the edge and the temperature in each point of the lens somehow will change over time as soon as the lens is heating up during the process because we are talking about multi kilowatt processes so a lot of power actually a lot of heat to dissipate uh, what does that give at the end it gives focus shift focus shift means that the focal point uh, after your system will move somehow and you will have a different position of the waist uh, along time. It can be actually centimeters with many uh, laser heads available on the market. At Kylabs, we can address that issue. We will discuss that later on. Thicker plates welding. Well, uh, there are some limitations today in the thickness that can be welded, mainly uh, due to uh, the unavailability of uh, nice solution to handle very high power. So the laser are existing, it's just that uh, it's not easy to um, have the beam uh, from the laser to uh, the material uh, properly uh, propagated. So we want to address that. We have developed system that can handle really, really extremely high power and that uh, probably will tomorrow enable to stick uh, uh, materials with a really uh, a bigger thickness. Complex metal welding, that's also a challenge. Uh, actually, it's uh, probably the one I am myself the most interested in, and I push everybody at Kylabs to look at that. We want to look at complex material welding. We are trying to look at, uh, look at uh, copper welding, for example. Copper welding today are mainly done uh, with blue and, green laser, blue and green laser, but we think that we can do it and we can improve the processes in IR because we can do the nice shape which is needed to initiate the welding and accompany uh, the, the, um, the keyhole when you are doing the welding. And also we can handle the extremely high power that are needed for copper welding. Quality improvement, it's also something very important for laser welding. Uh, we are some somehow looking at uh, how to reduce, for example, the spatters uh, when you are doing uh, welding. But how do we do that? We have designed at Kylab the Canon HP ring shaper head. So this head you can see now on the screen is actually developed and sold by Kylabs and distributed by Laser 2000 uh, in uh, the German speaking countries as it is. So from the connector to the uh, protective window, this is a system that is Canon HP, a whole laser head. So how it is working. First of all, you have a very standard connector, an LLKD connector. In that case, it is uh, provided by Presitec. Then you have a collimating mirror, which is basically just collimating the light uh, at the output of the fiber. After you have some shaping mirrors, it is the so-called MPLC because it is doing the beam shaping of the, of the beam. 
you have then a focusing mirror and a protective mi mirror in, inside the cross chat of the system uh, to the target shape uh, that uh, you can have and that you can do your process. All those mirrors are uh, cooled down uh, very nicely in order to uh, be able to handle very high power. I want to insist on the fact that it is integrated in an industrial environment. So the connector is standard available on the market. The laser is standard. Uh, I think the Trump laser are pretty well known from uh, all of you, but we could be compatible with other lasers as well. And one more point and very important point is that it is ready to use. Tomorrow you want to buy the laser head. There is absolutely no alignment to do at your facility. So you just buy the system and it's plug and play. You just have to plug the fiber, the fiber in the LLKD connector no alignment at all. Depth of field, uh, I guess that now you, you have realized that uh, I like to talk, uh, talk about depth of field. So in that case too, uh, we have a very nice depth of field. This is also really unique because you have other technologies which are providing rings. Uh, I think about double core fiber, for example, but uh, as probably uh, you know already, uh, they have a very nice ring, but the depth of field of this ring is extremely small. In our case, you have the same ring, three millimeter after three millimeter after uh, before and after, sorry, uh, the best ways or and the base pla the base um, plane in which you have uh, the somehow the waste, so the nice uh, ring. These uh, measurements are done uh, with uh, a primus focus monitor system. Quality of the shape, well, it's uh, a ring of uh, 600 micrometer in the inner diameter and one millimeter outer diameter with a quite nice uh, homogeneity of 10%. Uh, these results are already very good and they are providing a nice result, but uh, we are uh, still looking at improving the, those results. And I'm sure that our uh, standard product uh, available on, off the shelf uh, in a few months uh, will show uh, even better uh, specification sheet than today because uh, we will improve uh, that figure in uh, the next few months. Now, uh, let's stop on that slide a little bit because it is extremely important. I was talking about focus shift. Well, this is the focus shift slide. Uh, you can see actually that you have a stable operation at 16 kilowatts, so a very high power with a very nice transmission. But at that power, what is really unique is that you have no focus shift. You can see on this image that you have uh, less than a millimeter of focus shift, both at 8 kilowatt and at 14 kilowatt. It means what? It means that one millimeter is extremely small compared to the centimeters that you can have on other heads. And it is not depending on the power. So no matter the power, we expect that you will have no more focus shift. We have really solved that issue, which is somehow decreasing the robustness of uh, many processes. The um, application result where we were uh, welding uh, stainless steel, uh, six millimeter thick uh, sheet with uh, some shielding gas at one millimeter per minute. I will be short on that. Uh, you can see actually that uh, the weld quality is preserved over six millimeter, uh, meaning that we have a good quality over the depth of field I was mentioning just before. Uh, we have full penetration at six, seven kilowatt, no defect on the micrographs, and we have a very nice uh, welding seam. Actually, here you can see it's pretty large and pretty smooth. So we were very happy of those results. We have done a comparison with other uh, systems. We have uh, on the first line uh, the, quality, the, the welding that were, was done with our product, uh, our Canada HP product. Then you have also what is done with a standard output with a standard head. Uh, you have what you have with a double core fiber with energy in uh, both cores in one case and uh, at the bottom of the slide, energy only in the ring core uh, of uh, the double core fiber uh, laser. What you can see here is that you have a very nice welding quality. You have the, the, um, the, the larger uh, welding uh, key, keyhole somehow on the macrograph and extremely smooth. So it means that your process will be extremely robust and of very high quality. What you can see as well is you have really a reduction of the spatters compared, for example, uh, with a, a, ring, uh, a ring mode from, from a double core laser um, uh, welding. So that's it for applications. So let me now uh, go to the conclusion. What are the main features of MPLC products? So when we developed our products at Kylabs, uh, at least for all the laser material processing applications, we have always three things in mind. We want to have a very nice shaping quality. Shaping beams is our core uh, competency, so we have to focus on that. Somehow, we also look at yield improvement because yield improvement is a big challenge for all processes. And we also look at robust process because we want our systems to be compatible with the industry constraint. We want them to be integrated in the industrial world. 
shaping quality because of the multiplane light conversion technology, we can do any kind of shaping. It's really free form. So if you want to have an original shape for your process, do contact us. It's diffraction limited. It means that somehow we manage to reach the quality, uh, the limit uh, available uh, by physics uh, in terms of uh, quality. So it's a very, very high quality beam shaping. For example, I'm thinking about the top hat. The sharpness we are having is limited only by diffraction. Depth of field, I think uh, I did speak a lot about that today, but it's extremely important. We preserve the depth of field uh, with our systems. Yield improvement, when you want to improve yield, there are many things you can do as we have discussed today. Uh, an example is optimal shaping. You can see on the bottom uh, interferences generated from a Gaussian beam and interferences generated from a top hat, a square top hat beam. It's obvious that you will improve the yield when you are using top hat. So we do provide that kind of top hat. Beam splitting for parallel processing and high power handling, high power, high energy. Uh, our systems are made for that. And this is very important if you want to improve your yield. Now, uh, robustness of the process. Well, we want to be compatible with your high power laser, your USB laser, your FT talents, your scanners, your robot. We are focused on that and we want to prove that it is compatible with uh, your environment. On the high power side, we have removed focus shift. It is really important uh, for the robustness of the process. On USB side, we have stabilized the beam and this was extremely important if you want to have robust process as well. So that's what we are focused on, shaping quality, yield improvement and robust processes. Now, what have we done? I will just sum it up in one slide. We have done surface texturing with a line top hat and we have improved the yield by a factor of 20. We have done engraving with laser, with beam splitting, and we have improved the yield by a factor of nine. We have done glass cutting with LZH, and we managed to uh, process glass through the whole field of view of uh, um, uh, FTTA lens. And we have done laser welding uh, with a ring shape with the Institut Maupertuis, and we have demonstrated that we can really improve the quality of the welding with our ring shape. So a lot of applications, but there is a lot more. I am limited in time, so I've addressed this for once, but we have a lot of other results that we could discuss and we will be discussing in future. So do follow us and we will uh, let you know uh, what is uh, the other thing that we can do. So beam shaping is key if you want to improve your process yield and quality. On one side, for USB processes, you have to stabilize your beam, shape your beam, split your beam, and handle high power. At Kylabs, we can do that. On the other side, for high power processes, you have to remove the focus shift, you have to have a tailored beam shaping to your process, and you have to have an extended depth of field if you want to really improve your processes. We can provide that also with our uh, systems. So a lot of results are coming soon, as I was saying. We are looking at sharper top hat, we are looking at uh, splitting and shaping at the same time. We are also looking at uh, flatter bezel beams, it means bezel beam, um, that uh, have a flat profile of over the propagation. We are looking at cutting, additive manufacturing, dynamic bee shipping. That's going to be uh, really nice. Uh, we will have results uh, coming, so uh, do uh, follow us on that. And what are we looking for? Uh, well, as I guess uh, you know, there is Horizon uh, Europe, which is coming, uh, which are starting. We want to collaborate. We want to innovate. Innovation is a part of what we are doing at Kylabs, and we would like to uh, be in this project and uh, we really are looking for partners uh, which want to improve different processes, uh, all kinds of process, laser material processes. We want to have systems which are uh, integrated in the industry. So we are also looking for system integrators who want to improve the yield or the quality of their process. At last, we are always happy to discuss with lasers or scanners, manufacturers, and of course, end users, we are looking, which are looking at uh, improving also uh, the performance of uh, their processes. So I guess that's it for me now. So I just want now to thank you all for uh, your attention and you have some questions, I'm happy to answer them. So uh, th thanks Gwen uh, for the great presentation. I hope it was uh, as interesting for the audience as it was for me, especially the application results. I think uh, this is a really useful alternative uh, to SLM and DOE solutions. Uh, knowing from my background as an application engineer, how difficult it is to have these implemented in a stable way. Um, so yeah, <laughs> thanks a lot. Um, we now come to our Q&A session um, where we will discuss your questions in detail. Please feel free to um, ask more 
Um, we don't want to leave anything un unanswered. Um, so yeah, let's start with the first question. Um, for the pulse auto split, how exactly do you uh, how exact do you have to position the system, and what limitations do you see? So I'm um, not so sure to understand well the question, but uh, I'll try to answer. How exact do we have to position the system? I guess you are talking about the, the precision of the alignment which is needed. Uh, in that case, uh, the answer is not the same uh, actually for persons for split. For Canon, the split it's very large, so it's uh, really straightforward to align. Uh, it's pretty easy. For Canon Depths, uh, we had to think about the installation a lot, and we had to improve it a lot to make it easy. But right now, also, you are, it's just uh, something that you have. You have to have two mirrors. Uh, I don't know for from Tor Labs or other. I mean, anyway, it would not take uh, anyone. Just standard mirrors uh, on holdings, and it's the screw precision is enough uh, for alignment uh, at the input of the module. Uh, what limit do we do we see for those modules? I don't know ex exactly uh, what you are saying for limits. Uh, what I have in mind, for example, uh, for now for some limits, well, when we are talking about stabilization, for now it's difficult for us to go to lower wavelengths. So uh, we are very good at IR. We are looking at green. But UV is tough for us for beam stabilization for many reasons. So that's one of the limits. For beam splitting, one of the limitations, I guess, would be uh, on the available patterns. So we have figured out that there are some configurations which are working very well, that they are the configurations that we have chosen to implement in our standard product. But if you want to do, I don't know, like a splitted pattern doing uh, star, uh, well, it's not that easy. <laughs> So this is a limitation. So I don't say it's not possible. I just say that uh, uh, it might be complicated uh, depending on the splitting pattern that you want to have. All right. Um, could you elaborate the differences between the transmissive and reflective solutions in terms of losses? Um, uh, it's also not that easy to answer. So um, let's say uh, I will have different answers. Um, well, we have this uh, module, which is called mold cleaning, which stabilizes beam. Uh, this one is having a transmission which depends on the quality of the input laser, of course. If your laser quality is poor, your transmission will be maybe 70%. If your quality is extremely good, your transmission will be up to 90%. So it really depends on the laser, actually. Uh, then, except from that, we have an excellent transmission. So the Canon the HP module, they have more than 99%. But the thing is that I have to say also, transmissive laser head, they have also very nice transmission. But when you are handling uh, kilowatts, you cannot lose energy because if you are losing energy, it's heating up the system and nothing is working. So they have also nice, uh, nice transmission on the system. So uh, for high power, I guess it's not the main differentiator. For our first uh, system, for uh, USB uh, laser systems like Canon the Pulse, Canon the Axicon, and Canon the Spit, yes, there is a big difference. In for the Axicon, for example, we have more than 99. Um, uh, with a transmissive system, you will have maybe 95, something like that. And for Canon the Spit, also we have more than 95. Also, it depends on the patterns, but more than 95, which is much better uh, compared to a, a transmissive system. Hope it's answering uh, your question. Uh, thanks for that. Um, do you have any customization available? I think uh, this targets the HP specifically. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, it's uh, somehow it's a funny question. Uh, two years, I, uh, two years or two years and a half ago, we were only uh, proposing customization. So we have developed a range of off-the-shelf product, which is really good because it's really easier to uh, well to sell actually and to use for all the users we are addressing. But customization is somehow something that we are very uh, um, used to do at Kylabs. So the first uh, customization is the shape. Uh, for example, we have people who want to have uh, some original shape, like one or two dots with some uh, different distance in between the spots or some different shapes. I can look at any possibility. I don't say anything is possible, but there are a lot of things which are possible. So second customization will be maybe on the laser you are using. So for example, we will develop some products which are used with, let's say, a trump laser. Tomorrow you want to use a, a diode laser, where diode lasers are working very differently from trump laser because they have a BPP which is really huger. So probably we would have to customize the systems, and uh, this is the kind of customization that uh, we can do. Right. Uh, so the next question is uh, about the footprint of the system. Um, 
and which footprint is required to implement it in an existing machine, I assume it is meaning the Wait. HP as well. Yeah, I guess. Well, uh, <laughs> my camera is on, so I guess uh, I, I will do it with the hand. Uh, the X scale is very small. Let me put it there, just like this size, very small. But uh, you have to have lenses before and after. So uh, globally, it's fitting a machine. Uh, whenever we had to be in a machine, you have uh, optical tables, most of them, which are vertical, and you can put the X scale in this environment. Canon the Pulse and Canon Desput are like a shoebox size, like this size. And um, you have also to have uh, at least uh, most of the time a beam expander or two lenses before plus two mirrors so this is also taking kind of a shoebox and after the system you have to have only one lens so this one is not taking much space so probably you have the size of two shoebox to have uh, on your uh, optical table canon hp is maybe a bit bigger so my camera is there like this size maybe uh, you have the dimension on the website or just ask marco he, he will uh, send you the exact dimension a little bit bigger it's 15 kg it's um uh, a size which is very comparable with standard laser head. Somehow uh, we kind of copy on some of the dimension because we wanted to have something standard. So for example, it's 74 centimeter uh, uh, width, uh, which is a very standard width uh, for laser heads. And uh, to implement it on a machine, the Canon HP, you just have to have a very simple interface. So it's a simple mechanical uh, part. Can you tune your shapes with HP in real time? That's a question. Uh... You're taking the questions, okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. That's okay, that's okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, I love that question because um, it's very interesting topic. We are looking at that. So uh, for today, I'm happy to say that we can provide it um, uh, through uh, a custom development. So it means uh, the price will be higher because it would be uh, dedicated to your need. We don't have off the shelf product for that. Uh, our off-the-shelf product is providing a ring and you have only a ring. We have results uh, on uh, dynamic systems um, that we can discuss uh, um, on the with a specific uh, conference call uh, with anyone who is interested. And probably in one or two years, we will have a dynamic system available off the shelf, but we need time to, to um, I mean, make it standard. It's not easy, but it's already available uh, through uh, custom development. All right. Uh, what kind of asymmetric shapes can you do already? I think this is a, a similar question. Yeah, well, it can be asymmetric and not dynamic. Uh, so what we have done, we have results that we will be presenting at uh, Ikaleo uh, on asymmetric shapes uh, with Presitech uh, for cutting. So it's going to be kind of a C plus a dot. Uh, it's a standard shape to improve cutting. So exactly as we were doing with the ring, the shape is not that original, but the way we will implement it and the result that we will have, I hope, will be really unique. Uh, and this shape, we are targeting it because it should Im improve a lot the cutting speed. So it's a kind of shape that uh, we are providing. I think when you are talking about laser material processing, most of the time, this is the kind of shape you are doing. Uh, maximum two subshapes, and generally one of them is a dot. Actually, the thing is that we have done a lot of very weird shapes for, for example, um, Proteus, uh, our other product line, which is uh, handling modes. So it's very different. They will do a lot of different shapes. So it's possible. It's just that most of the time it's not useful for laser material processing. All right. So one of our last questions. Can you use BHP with Galvo scanners? Yes. Uh, it's not available of the shelf either. Uh, the system as it is, uh, is not made to be used with uh, Galvo scanners. Uh, why that? Because uh, most of the time when we were targeting welding, when you talk about scanners with welding, it's because you want to do a uh, wobbling. But when you have a ring, you don't need to do wobbling. So it was not that relevant. But we have done it uh, for additive manufacturing applications. So our technology is compatible with Galvo scanners. Uh, for today, it's available through some uh, custom development um, to your need. Yeah, I like that question, uh, especially because this was the first one I I asked you as well. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty standard, especially for additive manufacturing. I don't know if there are people uh, from uh, that uh, application, but they have to use Galvo scanners. Yes, exactly. Um, so I think this should be the last question. Uh, how do you compare with uh, the common solutions, like do you ease in terms of robustness? 
Um, well, DOEs. DOEs is a very nice technology. Uh, most of the time, they provide very nice beam shaping. So on the paper, it's working very well. The thing is that you will have a very small depth of field. So when you try, when you are trying to do actual processing, it's not convenient at all. So in our case, I did say that I think four times uh, during the presentation, we have a preserved depth of field. So it's really uh, a, a unique advantage when you want to have a robust process. Process. On the other side, if you want to use femtosecond laser DOEs. They are not working very well because you have the instability of the laser. It's always tilting a bit, shifting a bit. Uh, you have ellipticity and all that, and you don't have uh, the nice shape that you should have with a monomode laser because the laser they are never perfectly monomode. So because of uh, we have uh, this special feature which is called mode cleaner, we we are able to have a very nice uh, shaping, stable over time that you don't have to rely on compared to DOEs. Then the last advantage I guess is that. Um, uh, to have a, I would say, a robust process, you have to be very much compatible with industry uh, constraints. One of them is uh, the scanner plus uh, the F theta, and DOEs with scanners and F theta, it's not always uh, working uh, well. Uh, most of the time, you have chromatic effect at the edge of the field of view because it's working based on diffraction. So it's somehow by definition uh, you have different wavelengths propagating differently and when they go through the lenses and follow a different path in the lenses uh, you deteriorate the shape uh, at the edge of the field of view which in which is not our case because we are not working uh, somehow based on diffraction very well thank you very much um to our viewers uh, for for the to our audience for the for the uh, time spent and also to you, Gwen, for the very nice uh, webcast. Um, on, our, on our own behalf, uh, our next webcast will be on um, 9th of June. Um, it will provide uh, some information about precision laser diodes for quantum information uh, systems and adjacencies uh, from Photodyme, uh, our partner Photodyme, and it will be uh, again at 3 p.m. Um, all the best, and uh, thanks again. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.